Hey everyone, it's Chad here from the future. So I recorded these videos a couple days ago and I wanted to just kind of pop into the very first video uh, and explain a little bit. Uh, so I've actually been sick over the past couple of weeks and in the video and even now you may be able to tell I'm a little nasally, unfortunately. So I do apologize uh, if I talk real slow or at sniffle or whatever, because uh, I, I know I, I probably definitely did that. Uh, and a few videos um, but this series is kind of really entail how I use network automation I'm definitely no expert when it comes to network automation but I do think I have a, a pretty good overview uh, level of, uh, of how to use it and how you can incorporate certain uh, tools such as Liberate MS, Ansible uh, and several other things so uh, I really do appreciate you guys sticking with me through this series it, it turned out to be after editing roughly three parts um, the first part's really just an, an overview of how to set up a Linux box and also install Ansible. Uh, the second video, I believe, is GNS3 and setting up our inventory with GNS3. And then the third video is going to entail Libre NMS, which is a network monitoring system, and how we can use its API to leverage it to be uh, a dynamic inventory source. Um, so. These videos are kind of, uh, they'll come and go, so just be on the lookout. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, uh, I would greatly appreciate that, especially if, you, if you're looking for uh, the completed series. Otherwise, just keep checking on my channel, and I'll definitely post those as I can. But without further ado, guys, let's get started. So the first thing we're actually going to do is open up our web browser. Now I have a home lab set up. I would recommend you guys set up a lab for this, um, not necessarily use it in production right off, at least until you become a little bit more familiar with it. Um, but in my case, I do have a home lab, but I also use this uh, in a production network. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in to my hypervisor of choice, which is ESXi. And I have a bunch of different virtual machines already set up, uh, but I wanted to start off with something very basic, uh, and that's actually getting Ansible set up. So what we're actually gonna do is start from scratch. I'm just gonna create a new VM. And in this case, uh, you know, you can use VirtualBox. You, you don't have to use ESXi, you can use, um, you know, there, there's several different hypervisors. You could use Hyper-V, whatever, whatever you have access to, um, I'd recommend setting that up. Uh, if you also have Docker, that's actually how I run it uh, in my production network at uh, work. Um, so you can certainly use Docker, but in my case, um, I have Docker set up, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it, uh, you know, from scratch. So uh, what we're gonna do is create a new virtual machine. We'll just say network auto. Uh, YT and for my OS family I'm going to choose Linux and for my OS I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to do Ubuntu click next next on that um, now you don't need a lot of resources we're just going to give it uh, two CPU and then let's give it I don't know uh, four we'll say let's switch it over to this and we'll say four gigs um, hard disk space, you don't really need a lot. Um, we'll give it you know, about 50 gigs, should be plenty. And network adapters, for me, it's going in a lab VLAN, so I'm just gonna keep that as is. Uh, for the CD, I'm gonna select uh, that I want to use a data store ISO, and I'm just gonna find my Ubuntu, click next, and make sure all this looks good, I'm just gonna hit finish. So now it's going to actually go through and create that virtual machine for me and it's going to assign that ISO uh, to the virtual CD drive and then once it's done I should be able to come over here and turn the virtual machine on and it's going to boot to that ISO. So let's go ahead and get Ubuntu installed um, and then once we get that installed I will be back with you guys. I'm going to run through the setup process for this just kind of following the prompts. Now this, uh, this particular uh, ISO is the server ISO. Um, so it is it isn't GUI. So if you don't know Linux, that's not going to be a problem. Um, you just kind of follow along with me here and we'll get you set up. So we're just gonna go continue without updating. Um, it grabbed an IP address from DHCP. We're not using proxy, so we're just gonna kind of keep going through these prompts. Um, all of that looks good, so we're gonna go down to 
click done. Then it's going to give us all this information. We'll say continue. And then let's go ahead and just fill this out. And then we're going to hit done. Um, we do want to install open SSH server. We don't want to import any security keys. And then here, um, you can actually, if you're following along as I'm doing this, you can actually do Docker container runtime here. I don't usually recommend that. I, in certain distros, it works better than others, but in my case, sometimes it will actually install and everything seems to be fine. And then for whatever reason, I'll run into some issues. So I just prefer doing it manually. You can tick uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could tick it here, uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just gonna do it manually. So I'm gonna hit done. And now it's gonna take its time because it's actually gonna reach out and, and pick a uh, you know, extract all the files, install the operating system, and then it's going to reach out and do some updates. So this is where I'm going to pause the video until it is done. So I'll be right back. All right. So uh, that actually completed. Uh, I noticed now that it's booted. I, I, I made a typo on the device name, but um, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a command prompt window. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we can SSH to our device. Um, I actually forgot the IP address that it signed, so let's go ahead and sign in. Uh, and let's see, I am going to be 130.195, or excuse me, 31.95. So I'm just going to go ahead and SSH uh, to that device. And here we are. So we can go ahead and exit out of here. And we'll go ahead and leave this up because we'll need that here in just a moment. Um, so now that we're on the device, one of the first things that uh, we'll make sure we want to do, if you didn't opt to, let's go ahead and do an apt get update password. And this will just make sure we have uh, all of the latest updates for our device. And while that is running, let's go ahead and head over to Google and we're going to search up Ansible. And we're just going to say install because that's what we're trying to do. And we are running this now. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and run these two so we can get it set up. Looks like we're already done there. And let's go ahead and copy the rest of these commands. I'm just going to copy them to a notepad real quick. And then we'll just take out uh, these characters. And now we'll just paste. Do these one by one. It looks like that's going to be a problem if you don't. So go ahead and clear this one out. That. Go ahead and copy this next one. And as soon as it's done doing what it's doing now, we'll be able to paste that one in. Uh, and I'll be sure to link this down in the description uh, so you guys can just copy and paste as well. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that than having to type these manually. Go ahead and copy this one and paste it. And we'll say yes. So this will take just a second since it's a 299 uh, meg file, but um, it's going to actually take longer to process it on the system than it would to download it since I have pretty good internet. So, or excuse me, I have pretty good bandwidth. Uh, so it's processing now. And once this is done, we're going to make sure that it's actually installed and then go from there. So that should be getting set up and installed. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to head over and we're going to search up uh, Ansible inventory. And let's head over to their documentation here. And this is just telling us uh, how to build an Ansible inventory. Um, what I prefer is the YAML format, and what I'm actually going to provide, uh, it probably won't be in this video, but when we set up our monitoring system, I'm going to show you how to automatically pull those devices from the monitoring system into your inventory, and it's going to format it just like this for you. So that'll be really nice. Let's go ahead and check over here, and we do have it set up. So let's just click type in Ansible. Uh, so we're just going to do that, and I was misspelling it. So we typed in Ansible, we're actually able to see that it has now given us all these commands. So that's something that's great. We want to make sure that we can run those commands. But from here, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually set up our directory. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new directory and we're going to say uh, network. And uh, once we do network automation, we're going to go ahead and CD into that directory. And here's where we're going to put all of our playbooks. We're going to put everything that pertains to our uh, Ansible automation. So uh, one thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to create an Ansible config file. So we're going to say uh, create that CFG. We're going to create a host file. And this is where we're going to store all of our hosts. And let's go ahead and create a playbook. So we're going to say my playbook. We're going to put it in YAML format. So if we go ahead and take a list of our directory, you can see we've got our Ansible config file, we've got our hosts, and we've got our playbook. So let's go ahead and dive into our Ansible config. So we're going to do a sudo just to be sure we have permission. And we're going to say Ansible config. Uh, you can use your preferred editor. I'm going to use I and so we're going to go ahead and press I to insert and let's go ahead and set our defaults so we're going to type in brackets defaults brackets um, let's do a Tori equals hosts um, and then we're going to want to specify a couple other options uh, specifically because we're going to be doing a shell environment um, so we're going to want to specify a couple of other variables inside of this and essentially all this is doing is um, we are overriding the uh, particular runtime variables for Ansible so what it's actually going to do for our playbooks it's going to look for this Ansible CFG file anytime our playbooks ran and from there it is going to uh, actually uh, set up our environment so when we're telling it here we're saying inventory equals host um, it's actually going to look for when we call on our playbook, it's going to look inside the CFG file and it's going to find the inventory variable and map our host to that. Um, so that way our, our playbook can actually run. So let me see here. Um, there's a couple other things we're going to want to put in here. What I'm actually going to do is come back over to um, my host file and paste in a couple of things. Uh, mainly what we're pasting in. in variables that we're setting to make sure our environment set up correctly um, like host key checking equals false uh, retry files enable equals false and command timeout um, these are just things to set up our environment so we don't have to manually add any SSH keys um, and we want to make sure that if it's trying to execute something and it is not working correctly that there is some type of timeout set. So once we've got that all set, this is really all we need to set in here. Now we could add in more variables that would be our defaults. Um, you could certainly come up here and add certain things in, um, but we're actually going to set up host files that will contain all of our individual variables. So um, we've got all of that done. So we're going to go ahead and hit escape, colon, right quit. And if we go ahead and take a look at that file, we can see that everything is in there correctly. So now let's go ahead and open up our host file. So let's go ahead and VI to our host file. In here, what we're going to do is we're just going to create uh, a container called all. And then inside of that, we're going to create another container called hosts. And then inside of here, we're going to create our host. So we'll just say test. Uh, and then what we'll actually do is we'll say Ansible host and then we'll give it an IP address. What this is actually going to do is, is when we run our host, since we pointed our Ansible config to our host file, once we set our hosts actually up, it's going to come in here and it's going to find a group called all. Inside of that, we have host and we inside of a host, we have a host called test. And then we're just pointing to an IP address. So we could come in here and continue. We could say test two. This would be a second device. We could come over and give it an IP address. Now you would continue to do this for your environment. For now, I'm just giving it dummy information. Uh, so what I'm going to do is escape that and we're going to write that. And let's make sure that that saved correctly. And you can see uh, we now have uh, our host file set up. Now you would put in your real environment information but um, what I'm actually going to do is you don't actually have to do that. So I'm going to provide a script in another video once we get up our, uh, once we set up our automation piece for our network monitoring solution. 
Um, so that's going to be it for this video though. So with that piece in together, we actually have a simple host, uh, a host file set up and you don't actually have to do that. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a network monitoring system. Um, it may not be in the next video, but I'm going to at least get there. Um, so be on the lookout for part two. But in this video, just in summary, we've set up a basic uh, Ubuntu host. And from that, we've actually installed Ansible. We've configured our Ansible config file, and we have a little host file set up. Now, in the next video, the plan is to get our GNS3 environment set up, get a base network set up, and then bridge that to our physical network. Now, if you're doing this and you're following along with physical gear, you'll be able to skip around in part two to get to the part where um, I'm actually testing and making sure I can connect to those devices. Um, but be on the lookout for part two. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments and I'll be sure to get back with you. I really appreciate you guys watching this. Thanks.